Lesson 9.6, page 526, Solving Nonlinear Systems of Equations. In this lesson, you will learn how to solve systems of nonlinear equations by graphing. You will also learn how to solve them algebraically. And you will learn how to approximate solutions of nonlinear systems and equations. We learned how to solve systems of linear equations back in Chapter 5 in Lessons 5.1 to 5.3. Now, you notice the title here is Solving Nonlinear Systems. So, this lesson will definitely be related to what you learned in Lessons 5.1 and 5.3. In those lessons, you learned how to solve a system by graphing, a linear system by graphing, by substitution and elimination. So let's talk about solving a nonlinear system by graphing. A system of nonlinear equations is a system in which at least one of the equations is nonlinear. Okay? So if we have two equations for our system, remember a system meant we had equations with the same variables. This is saying a nonlinear system of equations. At least one of those equations would have to be like a quadratic or exponential. It can't just be y equals mx plus b form. It's got, it can't just be linear. Okay? When you have a nonlinear system consisting of a linear equation and a quadratic, so one equation linear, one quadratic, one of these three things can happen. You notice you could have the two graphs never touch. That would be a no solution situation. Zero solutions. Or my quadratic could touch my line in one place. That would be one solution. Or you could see my line could cross my quadratic in two places. That would be two solutions. For the graphing method, this is going to be easy. You can use your calculator and use the intersect feature to answer this. So it's going to not require you to do any work, which I'm sure you're happy about. Now, there's a, an advantage to that and a disadvantage. Here's the advantage, of course. I don't have to show any work. The disadvantage, you don't have any supporting work. So if you are in Mr. Keller's class, for example, or Mr. Shepard's class next year, and he asks you to solve a nonlinear system, and he asks you to show work, this method isn't going to show any work. So you could get the answer, but it's not a work method. This method would be great for multiple choice testing, where, hey, I could just plug them in my calculator, get the answers, and I'm set to go. Let's do this question together. So take your calculator out. We're going to do this question together. We're going to solve this system. And you notice there's two equations in our system. You see the first equation is a quadratic, and the second equation is linear. So let's go ahead and take those two equations and type them in our calculator. And you can see I've taken the time to plug both of these equations in my calculator. Okay. Now I'm going to hit graph. And I want to see where my calculator, you know, where does it look like, how many solutions do I have? Does it look like my um, parabola and line are touching? And as you notice here, it looks to me like this problem might have a solution right there. It looks like it might have one solution. So now I'm going to use the intersect feature. So remember the intersect feature, it's above the trace key. It says calc. So hit second, trace, option five. Now you'll see this little flashing icon. I'm pointing at it. It's asking you, do I have this icon on the first curve? Yes, I do. Press enter. Now do you see how the icon's on the second curve? Press enter. Yes, I'm going to move my icon. It looks like the intersection points about right there. So I kind of move my icon to where it looks like it intersects. Press enter. And here's the answer to the question. Okay? And you can see the answer here. I'm, this is negative 0.9999999. It's about negative 1 for x. And y is about negative 3.99999. So y is about negative 4. So my ordered pair for that would be the point negative 1 for x negative 4 for y. 
Now, if you look in the book, you'll see that's what they have. And you can see that right here. The solution's negative 1, negative 4. So I am matching the solution. It looks like we had one solution in the picture, and that's what we had. What I'd like you to do is why don't you pause the video and you try numbers 1 and 3. Put these in your calculator, graph them, and then use the intersect feature to find your solutions. Okay, you've had a chance to try that, and you should be getting for question 1, one intersection point, negative 1, negative 7. And in question 3, we actually had two intersection points, 2, negative 9 for one point, and 8, 9 for the other. If you aren't getting those, make sure you ask about it in class. Let's talk about solving nonlinear equations algebraically. Now, Algebraically has an advantage too. The graphing method has an advantage. It's easy. There's no work. Algebraically has an advantage. It has supporting work. So if you are ever asked to solve and you need the work to support it, this, these methods will work. So the first algebraic method, you've learned it. It was substitution. Remember in substitution, if you look here, we have a system. In substitution, we want to have one R of, of our variables isolated. And you notice that we have Y isolated in both equations. So this should be really easy. Y equals negative 2X plus 3. That means Y and negative 2X plus 3 are the same thing. So I can go to the first equation, and where I see Y, I can substitute in negative 2X plus 3. And you can see that here where I just highlighted. They took negative 2X plus 3, they plugged it in for y, and then they rewrote this out. Okay, now once we get to here, this is a quadratic. It's set, you can see it's second degree. We should work on what technique are we going to use. Are we going to factor it? Are we going to use a quadratic formula? I always look for factoring first. So let's add 2x to each side, and then let's take away 3 from each side. And when you do that, we'll get x squared plus 3x minus 1, and then when we, I should have added or subtracted the 3 on this step, and then x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. Now there's a quadratic equaling 0. Now this is easy to factor because isn't positive 4 times negative 1, 4, and positive 4 times, or plus negative 1, 3? Well there's my factoring, and remember that times that is 0, so one of these must equal 0. So I get two x values, negative 4 and 1. Now I haven't answered the question yet. I know what x is. I've got to find y. So to find y, if x is negative 4, go back here and plug negative 4 in for x. So negative 2 times negative 4, you can see they're doing the work here, plus 3 is 11. So one answer is, I'll highlight it, x is negative 4, y is 11, and they wrote that as an ordered pair. My second answer, when you take 1 and plug it in up here, you can see they did the work here. I have negative 2 times 1 plus 3, that's negative 2 plus 3, that's 1. So another answer would be x1, y1, and there's my second solution. That would be the substitution method. We also learned how to eliminate. Now, there is one little different thing about elimination if you have a nonlinear system. When I had you do elimination for linear systems, I always told you that we should write our equations in standard form. Now, remember, in linear equations, that's what standard form looks like right there. But in quadratic, standard form looks like this, okay? We still want to use standard form, but we're going to have to use the nonlinear standard form. That means get everything on one side, y on the other. So you see that's how they have this set up. Okay? Now, once we have it set up, I can organize. I have my second degrees. You notice the other equation didn't have a second degree. Here's my first degrees. And now, now I'm going to subtract. Because y minus y is 0, x squared minus nothing is x squared. Now, we've got to be careful here. Negative 3x minus negative 3x is nothing. And now we've got to be careful here again. Negative 2 minus negative 8 is positive 6. So you get the equation 0 equals x squared plus 6. 
this would be really easy to solve using square roots. That's net less than 9.2. So to solve that, we'll take away 6 from each side, get the square term by itself. Do you notice how we can't have a square term equaling a negative? So this problem would have no solution, so there's no solutions to the problem. What I'd like you to do next is pause the video and you try 4 and 6, use substitution for 4 and 6, and then try 7 and 8, use elimination for 7 and 8. And I'm back. Um, one thing I don't know if you've noticed before in our text, in your online textbook, there is a link next to each of these problems that you can hit and it will play and it will have someone show you how to work these out. I worked them all out myself also. There's number four. You get the answer of the point zero nine. Number six had no solution to it. Number seven had two solutions. They were approximately uh, 2.24 comma 7.24 and negative 2.24 comma 2.76. And then in number eight, um, I ended up sub or I'm sorry, uh, eliminating and using the Brooklyn method of factoring to get those two. If these aren't making sense or if you need help, ask in class and I can go through the steps. Or you could click the link on your online textbook next to each of these and someone will explain them to you as well. On page 528, they have approximating solutions. Um, we're going to skip this part. You can just use the graphing technique and intersect feature that we learned at the beginning of this video to accomplish the same thing. So we have enough to learn as it is. We're not going to worry about this technique. I won't ask you about it on quizzes and tests. If I ask you um, to solve a problem like this, You'll just use the graphing method, use the intersect feature, and see where these intersect. And so this page just shows you that you could approximate a solution by the graphing method. So we'll quickly do this. Solve negative 2 times 4 to the x power plus 3 equals 0 0.5 x squared minus 2x. So the first step of this would be to take the equation and look at what they do. They write this out separately. They make y equal to two, negative 2 times 4 raised to the x power plus 3. And then they make a second equation, y equals 0 0.5x squared minus 2x. Then take your calculator, use your y equals key, and type both of these equations into your calculator. And when you make your graph, you'll notice this picture. Okay. Do you notice how this picture, there's going to be two answers. There's going to be an answer here, and there's going to be an answer here. You'll have to use the intersect feature twice. The first intersection would give you the point negative 1 comma 2.5 for an answer. And when you check the second intersecting point, you would get an answer of about 0.47 for x and about negative 0.83 for y. Okay. So the solutions to this problem would be x is negative 1 would make this statement true, and 0 0.47 for x would make this true. I would recommend you try putting this in your calculator and just verifying what you're seeing here that you can get it in and you are getting it. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have any questions, make sure you ask in class.